Hello, Ron Stafford from RVTV. As you know, we make some of the best quality annexes in Australia and there's one company we partner with at Great Annexes to ensure that your annex is as high quality as it can be and it's Wax Converters Textiles. And these guys here are based in Maitland and are producing the canvas we use on our annexes. And the annex material that they produce here is premium stuff to ensure it lasts for your use. So Jim and James, founders of this company, are gonna take us for a tour of this massive facility to so come check it out. James. How are you? Good to How see you. Nice to see you. Jim. How are you? How are you? You're you looking very well. I feel well too. Thank you very <laughs> much for having us. <laughs> Hello to the audience. These guys here are the two men behind this incredible company of wax converters. And uh, look, we are so honoured to allow you, well, for you to allow us to come down here. Thanks very much. And uh, we're going to show these, these viewers exactly why your canvas is, is the best. We're excited to have you here, Ron, and thanks for coming down from across the border and yeah. look forward to showing you what we do. Yeah, no problem whatsoever. First of all, hey, the company, when did you found it, Jim? We made our first delivery in December 91. Is that right? That yeah. Export order. Is yeah. that right? So that, therefore, we're 28 years or so in. 28 years, yeah. Wow. Exactly. And it's only one way you can get 28 years in, is you're doing the right thing, right? Ah, today, yes. It's not a bad, not, not a bad, uh, Analogy. Uh, acknowledge that, thank you, because today it's, it's tougher than it was 20 years ago, believe you. And look, and, I, and I'll, I'll be honest, the reason we're here is because there is becoming such a wider disparity between materials. Go back 28 years ago, we had a lot of manufacturing of textiles in Australia, correct? Correct. And we're slowly losing that, but we've still got you guys who are championing that for us and, get, and keeping that quality level yeah. available for the for the people. Yeah, the Australian industry is not what it was, and that's a sad thing. But having said that, the global economy uh, does mean that there's a lot of choice out there, and you can't see what's good and what's bad to yeah. the naked eye. And that's a key point, because yeah, you, absolutely, I do caravan shows, obviously I'm on display, some of my competitors, and a lot of my competitors are now overseas, they're all sourcing their materials from these you know, B grade suppliers, but by the naked eye, you can't tell. You can't. First up, you can't. It's, and this is where, where experience has to allow the, the, the time to, to work out whether this fabric's good or not because, as you say, they all look the same to start with. Yeah. But you, the UV stability is uh, non-existent in many cases. They break down, they go to powder, they tear yeah. easily. Uh, you know, the fungicide and the mildew comes into them quick smart as well. Yes. So we make sure we build all that in. But that yeah. take, that's taken time to get the history behind us that people know and trust us. Yeah, and that's, that's right. what it's been about for us. And trust is, is a very, very um, relevant word when it comes to wax converters. You can trust this stuff, and this is why we use them, is because I need to make sure I produce that product for you that I know is not gonna fail, and this is why these guys are in our world. So, hey, thanks for having us. We're really excited to be going for a tour. Would you mind showing us around? Let's go, Ron. Excellent. Come on, Ron, let's go and check. Let's go have a look, it's exciting. Wow, this is impressive. So you call it sewing thread, we call it yarn. Ah. It's basically the same thing. Okay. We just um, have different, bigger, bigger cones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, every fabric, that's how we start. Right, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's very much, yeah, it's a, it's a thread. It's a sewing thread. It's a sewing thread, yeah. 212s is uh, DX12. Oh, you'd be using 212s for your sewing, no doubt. Yeah. If you look at your spool, yeah. you know, um, yeah, so every fabric has a different thread in terms of uh, composition, poly cotton blend, yes. also thickness. Oh yes. So, uh, uh, and how much? How many meters on that one cone? Uh, there'd be about three thousand on that. So three kilometers of, of thread thereabouts. Yeah. So this is a warp. So all the threads. So to make this machine, we're going to load up the chosen fabric. We have 400 threads we can put up on this creel. That's the most we can do. So you would have all like a warehouse of different types, and then the, the technicians have to come and load it, 
and then feed them all. And then this barrel spins around and pulls them all through. That's uh, that's quite impressive. Okay, so so I would imagine that what we don't want to see in this process is a breakage in the yard. Uh... <laughs> Correct, Ron. Well, one break, and then sensors up there that'll stop the machine. Oh, it stops it straight up. Otherwise, it's a nightmare. It goes through, and you got to miss in. You know, you got one thread missing in the whole batch. So we got the latest German equipment here. We didn't make this one ourselves. This is a specialised machine. Yeah. It's how many threads are coming in? Uh, about 400 come in at one time. 400. 400 threads, wow. That's but that only does about 40 centimetres of the width. So we're going to make your fabric 2.4 wide. We're going to join about 14 different sections together. Oh, wow. So that's why this warper is on a, um, on a track. So once he pulls through 4,000 metres, we're moving across. Pulls through another. The yarn, if the yarn is in good quality from the start, the material's got no chance. Correct. Yeah. And I suppose our imported mates overseas are getting whatever economy yarn they can find and using it, right? Quite often they're price driven, and that means they cut the quality down. Yeah. Uh, we always try to aim for the best possible product at a fair price. Yeah, yeah correct. Now yeah. this is just the threads for the long ways. We're going to go over to the machines that then bring the cross weaves. That's right. So all the looms out there, all they do is put the weft across. And it's got to be... Uh, controlling each individual thread because it's a plain weave. So we're going to be going over one, over one under the other, over one under the other, yeah. for the whole width. Yeah. Okay, so what's happening here is the last process we saw them all coming together was just doing the length of the canvas. This one's coming across it. It's nice for there, on a different shape, to, to hook it up. You got a little hook like that. On the other side, see the yarn passing. And, and that's then, pushing it in. And then it beats, beats and fabric is made. Wow. Yeah. It's so fast in the eye, you got no chance of seeing it. It's actually slow. When you saw it was 400, or 450, if I want to... If any of the yarn breaks, it will stop the machine as well. So this is our annex material before we go through the cleaning stages and the uh, preparation. That's your base cloth. Yeah. That's the base cloth. It's called loom state. Yeah. Off the loom. Loom state material. And that is some of the best loom state material you can find. It's yeah, fine. so this is the opportunity for the operator to inspect the base cloth to make sure there's no impurities. They put it on this whiteboard and they shine the light through the material so they can pick up any problems before it makes it to the uh, to the coating plant. All these uh, jets send moisture into the air to keep the whole place moist so that the, the base thread doesn't dry out and break. So they're constantly putting humidity into the air to keep everything moist. So it's been bleached. I've been bleached. It'll spin for 20 hours to make the bleach react. It's a reaction process. So literally that'll sit there and spin for 20 hours. Is that still wet? Yeah. And we spin it so then all the liquid doesn't just run out. No, of course. It stays in every coil. Yeah, it keeps rolling around itself. Then we've got to wash the bleach off so it doesn't tenderize or weaken the cloth. Oh, yes. So if, it's, if it stays there for three days, man, it's going to weaken it. So that's why 20 hours maximum. Ah. Oh. It reacts on the cotton, yeah. makes it all, gets all the weaving lubricants out and yes. the oils, yes. which attract mildew. Yes. Um, and then we've got to wash the bleach off. Ah, yes. So this is a big industrial so washer. cleaning the material now. And that's going to end up on a big raw statement roll at the end of it. But dripping wet. But dripping wet. So then we're ah, going to dry it. With, yes, yes. So then we've got the drying cans. Ah, so this is drying. So after washing, the image comes drying, and you get nice pure white fabric. 
Yes. Okay. And then that's essentially what they refer to as base cloth. Yeah. Is that right? That's now what we call prepared base cloth. Prepared base cloth. The weaving stage is base cloth. This is now prepared, prepared base cloth. Ready to go. And then we go coating. Coating. And too many Chinese and offshore companies bypass in canvas. They don't bother doing this. They, get, they go straight from base cloth to, to coating. coating. So essentially we've got a bleach art that shirt. takes the raw material and cleans it. Uh, it takes all the weaving oils and lubricants out, yes. Yes. Then it's going to spin there to activate and make sure it absolutely does its, its job over 20 it's hours. It's a reaction process, yep. We're now coming onto this, going through this machine to clean that bleach off the material. Correct. But it's going to come out the other end wet. Yep. And it's going to go through these big drying drums yep. to be rolled out, come out nice and pure to be, white. be pure white. Ready, absorbent, ready to take the coating. Ready to take it. And free of any impurities that could compromise its 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 uh, quality. Correct. Yeah. Yep. So from here on, after the woven and canvas is done, then we're going to make it protective for outdoor use. Uh, there's no point just having good base cloth and then poor coating value adding processes. So what we do here is we actually prepare the fabric before coating. Yes. Okay? So yes. It's very important. A little process. bit more time involved at the start to get the better result of that. Correct. Okay, we've just entered the printing shop. They're getting ready to paint the stripes on the material so it looks good for whatever the application is. And when you look, when you go flicking through our sample books and you see all the different color stripes, this is where the stripes get put on. So this is a very complex bread and butter system, basically. Yes. So this is a knife coat. So the canvas is coming up underneath there. Yes. And it's a flat blade scraping. Okay. And what you'll see here is uh, the stripe design we're doing here is three colors. The dark gray, the light gray, and the white. And they're all falling through the gaps in the coating blade. Yes. So your knife blade has set available uh, slots. slots. Which are straight lines. Which, are straight, which comes through as a straight line. So I can see that. So we, we, we're picking the colours we want, but we're, we're governed by these paint boxes, if you would like. Yep. We call them that. We call them boxes, yeah. and, uh, and then that's obviously translating straight to the, the canvas print. So, you know, the old two stripe burgundy or grey it's purely because they're governed by this particular part, right? Correct. Yeah. The coating technology. Yeah. Well, and this is striping and coating in one in process. In one process. Yeah, right. So this is more efficient. Yes. But um, limited with its output with design. Correct. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So again, we're looking at the base cloth that we, we saw prepared earlier, and it's now going through this roller. They've come up with a design, which is a stone design. And as you can see, like a, a shale wall, that's getting printed on the material. So, James, it's getting printed up onto here, straight into what I imagine would be an oven to a, set it. A curing oven, yep, yes. a, to, to cure the dyes. Yes, so it comes out the other end dry. Cured, and then and, we have to value add with a protected coating. And then there's another process of coating the material. Correct. Which is then all your protectants against mildew and mold and yeah. UV and all those things, right? That's right, Ron. So, this is actually a silk screen. So just like traditional silk screen painting, the kids on t-shirts, yes. um, that's a rotary screen, because it's round, and the ink's actually inside the screen here. Oh, it's being so fed in here. In through the screen there, you'll see a bit of black ink in there. Yes. And there's a squeegee, and that's pushing the through, it. through there and onto the, onto the surface. Yeah, so right. basically we're not governed by any design. We can do any colors, any pattern yes. by doing it this way. Yes. But the downside is then we have to value add a second pass. Right, yeah. yeah to, so to, where to you get the flexibility of design, you get an extra process to follow. Yeah. Sure. But at least we've come up with something creative and something That's out of the box. Stripes. <laughs> That's not, not stripes. stripes. <laughs> yeah. so at the moment, there's no UV or waterproofing or mold and mildew. It's, it's just the print on the loom state. Correct. Yeah. And I'll notice that obviously the back still got to be coated. Yeah, so when we... Oh, uh, so this is when you dip it, 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 this is what you're saying. It's a great, it's doing both sides at Both once. sides and keep it breathable. Yeah, so this will be for annex canvases, uh, um, canopy, canopy canvases. Yes. So you want a bit of breathability in there too, so Dyn approved is the best finish for yeah. that. So stenters, Ron, basically um, give you dimensional stability in a fabric. So too much shrinkage or not enough. Basically, these are clips and the fabric runs down and you control the width. Oh, and when right. you then heat set it to a press, like this is a heat press, yes. basically a big oven. Yes. It then controls your shrinkage to be zero across and 2% down the road. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. And the 2% is pretty cool to make sure that fabric will actually seal over properly when it's in use. Correct. Yeah. Which yeah. can be a pain for us sometimes because we make a piece and it shrinks. 
it's actually good for it to shrink, but aesthetically it can let it down a little bit. And, and it can be Which challenging. Is, it's like, you know, it's just, you got, if you want the good, you got to sometimes take a bit of the bad, right? And that's right, Ron. So. Yeah. Just the amount of plant that you have here is, and equipment is just yep. off the charts, man. <laughs> It's just everywhere you look, there's another massive industrial machine doing something. Same. This is the uh, the hallmark, right? It is. Because uh, wax converters. Correct. E explain the name. Well, at the time when Dad first set up, we had one product, which was oil skin for the dryers of bone, aluminium style jackets. Yes. And we are converting wax into a textile. Yes. So Jim just thought, yeah, let's register that. And at the time, it's exactly what we are doing. Yeah, right. But of course, now we do so much other things. Yeah, of course. It was too late to rename the company. Yeah, but yeah. it is what it is, mate. So. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. So the, the, the fabric comes in this end. So in clothing fabrics, remember we pre-dye it. So we've woven it, we've bleached it, we've so dyed it. So this is going to be like an oil skin, this right? This will be an oil skin. Oil skin, yeah. yeah. And then in comes the the wax. It's a wax bath in there, and then now comes um. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can see that. So if you're looking uh, over the top, is it yeah. big? bath of wax in there so there's raw wax coming out coated now for your oil skin finish and there's finished wax oh, product there you go yeah and that's your uh that's your dryer bone right there yeah wax wax brown canvas and this this stuff here well everyone knows it goes and goes and goes doesn't it like well, some the of guys out bush have been using it 40 50 years some well, jackets and the, and the secret is in the coating, right? So that's, that's really formulated to incorporate all those key elements, antifungal, UV protection, all those, all those things, right? On top of a very high quality base fabric. Yeah, so the base fabric is the, is the skeleton that is important. Yep. Prepare, then, prepare the canvas properly so it's nice and absorbent. And then we load up with yeah. the best possible coatings. coatings so you're getting premium, premium. Any way to roll. That looks tremendous. Lovely tone, even coat, no distinct lines or marks. It's all very even. Do you ever come out and just hug a roll of canvas from time to time? <laughs> <laughs> laboratory? Oh, laboratory. This is where the engineers go to work. So we've got a lot of small scale, mainly the R&D work. So if we've got something new, we try to do it in a small scale first because it's so expensive to do run, run a full batch. Oh yeah, true. So we've got dryers and steamers and mixers. And so it's like a miniature production facility. Correct. And we also have batch to batch testing. So whether it be colour for shade, um, we've got to, every batch gets colour tested before we run it. Yes. Um, there's a target spot and we've got to be within 5% of that spot, the colour reader here by computer. Wow. So, um, so there's no second guessing whether it's just by eye, it's all <coughs> calibrated to computer. No, and in textiles you always have tolerances, we'll never have it exact, yeah, exact every even time. temperatures, running in winter to summer. Yes. Um, we can ma match identically the recipe, but you always have a different outcome. But I think probably what the key point of this discussion is, is that you're going to the effort oh, to test. And we know quality <coughs> control and testing is important to maintain a high level. Yeah. And you know, people who aren't interested in that aren't doing it. And, and most batches we make will have some tweaking to do. Sometimes it's two or three goes. Yeah. On average, most things need about two tweaks before we actually run, run production. Run the big, yeah, because yeah, so. you can imagine, yeah, I can imagine even as a layman on canvas production, seeing what we've just seen out there, it's a big, big operation. There's a lot of material involved in one run. We don't want to stuff it up. Yeah, you don't want to. Yeah, what do you do so with some it? Some fabrics take 24 processes to get through. Look, yeah. look, we're only a small annex producer. We're not even the biggest in town. Don't, don't claim to be. But I tell you what, it makes so much of a difference when you're using a material that actually is done properly. Because there's one thing that I've enjoyed in my time producing, James, is that my annexes don't come back. Like, people aren't coming back and going, hey, mate, listen, this has failed or that's failed. Literally, we build it and we send it and then it, and then unfortunately we build a good product so then yeah, they're right. not coming back for another one so in a commercial sense it might not be the ideal outcome if i'm a greedy money man to repeat business but you know what repeat business comes in the fact that they upgrade their caravan or they send their mates down who've also got a caravan and it comes to me that way and they're all happy then because they've 
all invested into something that's decent and therefore, you know, everyone's happy. I don't have to rework anything. They don't have to go and buy something new again. It's, it's, it's a win. Just deal properly. Just deal, use the good stuff from the start and I reckon it serves you better. Yeah, well, that's great to hear, Ron, and thanks for the compliment. You know, we're only as good as what you guys are as well, but um, we certainly set out to make sure that our fabric is a key feature in your product. Yeah, that's correct. You know, so um, obviously you've got great fabrication and design and features and zips and windows and all that. That's what you guys do best. Yeah. But, we certainly don't want you even double thinking the one aspect that the material won't work. Yeah, yeah, and that's the confidence we've got in these guys is knowing that, you know, as we've seen on the tour, they, they are going to every length to ensure that it is perfect. You know, steps that would not be happening mm. in other shops is happening here. I suppose in some ways, if we look at a commercial aspect, you could be, you know, giving yourself a, a bit of a margin away from your competitors in that regard, which could be good and bad probably commercially, but in saying that, at least you know what goes out that door is, is smick. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're happy to be that position. Yeah. So next time you are considering, or if you're considering annexes on, on any level, or even outdoor textiles on any level really, wax converters are making the good gear here in Australia. They aren't mucking around with cutting corners, they're doing it properly, which just translates to best value for money for you guys. So if you're looking for material, look for the wax converters. Demand wax converters. They're Australian made, they're doing it properly. Peace of mind for you. James, thanks for showing us around. I'm absolutely impressed with your facility. And, uh, and, and I'm now even more enthused to go back to my clients and, and be able to tell them even more about the material of my understanding. Has it, even my understanding in 20 years has just grown today. Awesome, and I really? thank you for taking the time with us. And for your trip down here, mate. Thank you for uh, looking yeah, us up. Mate, it's been a pleasure. Until next time, see you later.